Curtis, you first. Right. Cool. Yeah. So, guys, uh, um, uh, I, don't, I know about almost everybody here, but in case uh, you don't know me, my name is Chris Burdick. I am with Rain City Capital of Oregon. And I'm Lisa Say, Rain City Capital of Washington. Uh, both of us are active investors, um, LOs for Rain City Capital. And what we do is once a month, uh, we like to bring on guests, have certain topics that we talk about. Um, we do Hard Money 101 classes. This class actually derived from the last class that we did. Someone wanted to know uh, information and how uh, they can hire a contractor. How do you pick a contractor? All the great questions that we're going to dive in today. And that's kind of how it stemmed is we had someone fill out the Q&A questions afterwards, the survey. So, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Guys, this class is a, um, a kind of a structure for success, how to work with investor friendly contractors. So they're kind of like two different streams, guys. There's contractors that someone would hire for their own house. And, you know, and I kind of call that kind of a retail contractor. But then there's like contractors that are more investor focused, like with flippers and investors, this kind of stuff. And you can you can you know work out relationships where you can get things at a, at a less expensive cost. They work with you more with a mindset of how can we maximize the rehab to get the most profit in the deal and the highest price. And so it's a different mentality that the contractors are are coming from. And so you want to have those kind of partners if you're going to do this kind of business. Absolutely. Um, so what this class is about, we have awesome contractors that are willing to come on. They are so incredibly busy. They have businesses, that the contract business, but they also have flips of their own that they're doing right now, but they're giving us an hour of their time to ask us, uh, for us to ask them lots of questions. Um, Peter and Al, Hi. he's going to dive in and he's going to, Tell us about the areas he serves, because I know he serves King County, Snohomish, Pier, Kissap. He does lots of different kinds of construction from little to big. We're actually going to have um, two case studies that they did, and so you can actually see their work. Um, and they're with uh, Westside Integrity Construction. So thank you so much for joining us, and let's just dive in with the questions. Yeah, so thank you. Good. Um, yeah, absolutely. Oh, hey, I was just going to also add in too. Um, so Westside Integrity Construction, uh, they serve Kings, Snohomish, Pierce, and Kitsap counties. And uh, these guys do all types of construction projects. You know, they work on finding solutions for real estate investors. And um, yeah, they really have the, wear the mindset of, uh, of the flipper. So guys, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Um, Great. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Uh, okay, nice. jumping in. Okay. So this class, just so everybody knows, um, this was a this was a, um, born out of our surveys from, from our last classes. You guys, thank you for doing the survey sheet. So that's why we kind of created this class. This one has actually been on my mind for a long time to do this, bring contractors in because I always felt like this is one of those pieces that people struggle with of like how to keep the rehab right. Um, so along those lines, um, guys, tell us how you guys first got into real estate contracting. So uh, I was a real estate investor. That's pretty much what we're doing, doing some properties, fixing it up. But a lot of uh, some contractors, I got screwed by some other contractors. I don't know why they do that because they're not going to get a repeat business anyway. So I decided <laughs> my biggest weakness is uh, the construction part. So I decided when I started working with Al and my other partners, they did a great job on my properties before. I decided to just open up a construction business. I want to turn my weakness into my strength that's that's what it did and our goal is to pretty much do our own projects using our own construction company but now it's coming to the point that we're getting a lot of people wanted to hire us wanted, wanted to hire us for their for to fix up their property and new developments and everything you know that's how we got started absolutely because that's truly like a contractor can sometimes kill a deal if you know you give them the money and they left or they don't do a good job so honestly one of the biggest relationships i think everyone needs to have is a good agent a contractor and a good lender and right. then they have the tools to succeed so a good contractor is like gold absolutely exactly and where guys... do people find you like, how do they find you? How, how, how can someone that needs a GC, needs a general contractor, how can an investor find someone like you? 
Go ahead, Al. Well, uh, let's start with social media. We are definitely part of several groups uh, on Facebook, Instagram, um, our website. We we go to in-person um, events, real estate investment events, and uh, meet all types of different investors from season to uh, new investors. And uh, it's just networking, really. Um, uh, really, and, and repeat repeat business through referrals. Uh, pretty much sums it up, unless I missed something, Peter. But that is, the, that is really the root of how we uh, get in touch, or customers get in touch with us. And to be to be honest, you know, we don't even do that much of a marketing. We just have a website, we just have a um, a, a YouTube video that people watch, and then people just I just keep getting calls every day. Like, um, you know, because I know a lot of Filipino people that wanted to do a adult family conversion in their home, and we got a bunch of those. And then I just keep getting calls, and then I don't even have time to market because people are calling us already. We got multiple projects right now, from our own projects to. Um, to other people wanted to fix their home, renovate their home in commercial properties. But they can go to our website, it's westsideintegrityconstruction.com. They can reach us there if they need something, you need help with any of their construction you know, uh, work, they can uh, contact us there. Awesome, and we will be listing that at the mm -hmm. end. So people that are on here that were scrambling to write that down, don't worry, the end slide. Uh, we'll have their contact information. So you will definitely be able to get that 100%. Um, I'm asking you guys something, and this is kind of off script, but something that, 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 that we, we talked about um, before we came on uh, for the audience. Um, guys, question for you. How do, how would you like people to have a conversation with you in terms of um, being a contractor for flippers versus being a contractor for a retail investor? Like, for example, I go into you know contract furnish mark to get a to get a um, a quote on a granite countertop or, or quartz countertops for my own house and they're like look at it and they're like everything like it's like seven thousand dollars, but I know that my that my flipper GCs can do it for like three thousand dollars, so how does that conversation work? I mean it seems like it'd be kind of awkward, but how do people to approach you as as far as like you know hey how can we work this in a way where we have a, have, a, have, a, have a lower cost of, of, of the rehab to make the deal work better. But we're going to give you all this business. Like, how would you like, how does that conversation work the best with you guys? Um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll start with this one, Peter. Um, <clears throat> so really there's a market for all types of construction projects. Um, as you said, Chris, that countertop in your own home would be something personal, something that you have an attachment to that you really want to either you have a designer or really just want to go with your own design ideas um and, and at that point I and mean, you can kind of go from low to high end however you want to go about it now with with the investment properties as a contractor uh, that knows the market for uh, uh, investment properties i mean obviously we're not going to give you samples of super expensive materials, whether it's countertops, uh, plumbing fixtures, electrical fixtures. We know what's trending. We know that uh, it's gonna be contracted grade materials. And, and, and those, a lot of those materials are, you have endless designs, choices to choose from, whether it's tiles. So that's the conversation. Uh, if you were, were to have it with us or another contractor, let them know right off that. Uh, what type of project you're doing here and that you want to, uh, I would advise stick with contract to grade. Now, you don't always want to do that because, I mean, if you're uh, flipping a house in Clyde Hill over in Bellevue or Magnolia, of course you want to stay with the Joneses and up to par with uh, what's around in that area. So uh, I would have the conversation just based on the project itself location, uh, design, and, and just intention from uh, the, the investor himself. You want to piggyback on that, uh, Peter? Yes, uh, so what, every time I talk to those people that want to do a flip, 
we always try to focus on what is a neighborhood norm and do not spend too much money on the useless stuff. So we must we must focus on things that we must do. Most important thing, whatever, electrical, plumbing, and all those things. And the second is, is this is this design good enough? Because that's what's selling on the area. Because if you know what's selling on the area and you know who's buying on the area, you can find a comp that you can emulate because the people buy that comp. You don't want to be too spending, spending a Bellevue finishes on a Tacoma property, right? So focus on a minimal that can we can sell it fast so we can reduce the holding cost and then you can save money on materials. No need to go overboard. That's what I, that's what I always recommend to other clients okay. doing flips. Awesome. One thing that I absolutely love and know that if people hired you, you guys and your team to do the work is you already have the investor mindset and you invest yourself versus someone that only works with what we call end users, someone that's going to do it for their own home. You know, if someone's going to say, hey, I want to put this marble countertops and let's say it's Tacoma and, you know, 900 square feet, something that doesn't fit the market, you're mm-hmm. going to say exactly what all three of you just shook your head. Hey, let's not do that. So having a contractor that has your back Mm -hmm. is crucial and so important. So I I love and appreciate that you guys will have that conversation with your clients. Um, Yes. We're not just, we're not just typical um, contractor because we do our own project as well. So we help and guide newbie investors to avoid some of those pitfalls. That way they don't have to learn the hard way. Right. So that's what we came in. That's what we come into play. We can share our knowledge. And then we do a good quality work. We stay on time and within a budget. That's our, our company. And we stand okay. by for that. Absolutely. Um, this next question, uh, I'll, I'll address this to, uh, to Peter. Um, what, should, what else should investors do um, before presenting a deal to, to their contractor? Like, should they walk the property? What kind of numbers should they have um, before they have you guys come out and walk the property? We, we always use the same numbers that we're using because the numbers that we use is pretty much standard. And then uh, we, we have to focus on what is the ARV and our cash and cash return on investment and same thing as a project ROI. So the cash and cash investments that we look for within the parameters of our investment criteria is pretty much 70% and 15% on the ROI. That way, every dollar that we put in, we got 70, 70 cents that we make money it's worth it. The risk covers, the, the reward versus risk actually covers us. So that's what we look for. So when we look at the place, what is the area? Can we make this kind of ARV? We always use the Lego, lego.com as, as our calculating tool. So we can find out what would be the ARV and all the deductions, how many months we're going we're gonna to go. And we, we typically want faster that we don't have to do permitting. But although we're still doing some projects that so we got to do a lot of permitting, right? So sometimes it's hard to find a deal and we got a deal in front of us that we can make good, longer process, but the money's still there. But bottom line is faster turnout, uh, 70% cash and cash return on investment, and then 15% project ROI is what we look for. Cool. So if they have that, then come to you, talk to you about yes. doing the deal. Um, what, do you, what factors play in? Or timing, because you talked about timing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, should an investor that's going to hire you go, oh, we're going to be done in a month or, oh, we're going to be done in three months. What factors make the timing of the construction build? Can you touch on that? Um, Al, do you want to touch on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, one factor is obviously the scope of the project, right? If you have a project where, you know, you're really just doing aesthetics on the house, uh, you know, new cabinets, new paint, um, I mean, obviously, those type of projects uh, will be uh, in and out, you know. Uh, I would say a month to a month and a half. You know, as Peter mentioned earlier, with projects that we have to pull permits on, and uh, it's going to be anywhere from three to five months, worst case scenario. Uh and, and it really, really is just the, the permit process is kind of the hold up, um, because once you get that, it, it's all downhill from there, and, and the work is being done. So, uh, yeah, it's really just the scope of work, whether it's it's aesthetics or you're 
building new walls, redoing the, the layout of the existing home and stuff like that. So those are the factors that really come down to how long your project can take. Awesome. What was your guys' fastest and longest? Do you guys know offhand? Oh, this two that you guys are going to be showing. The fastest one was the Lakewood. There's no permitting there. That's why we just got it done so quick. The yeah. Tacoma took longer because of the permitting. Took us longer because everybody's on vacation. They don't want to work. Every time we submit, we have to wait for a long time. And finally, we got it done. And we are under contract now. So very excited. And I also want to mention um, just the, the times that we're in right now. Every building department's a little backed up. It's getting a little bit better. So that was that is part of the reason why our Tacoma project uh, took a little longer, too. So. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, go next from your perspective, uh, what can investors do? What would you recommend the top things investors should do to get the biggest bang for their buck in their in their renovation project? Like the biggest impact, but the least amount of money. Like you know, what, what, what do you what would you guys say your top things as far as any reno, you know, cosmetic or whatever? Yeah. Um, build relationships. Uh, your vendors. Um, start building, making a list of three, four different plumbers, uh, three, four, so on with uh, electricians and, and then, uh, your, where you buy your countertops, your, um, your cabinets, because the more of a customer you become to them, you'll be able to, to get contractor investment, uh, discounts, uh, and, and, and talk to your contractor, whether it's with us or somebody else. And, and build a relationship not only with them, build it with uh, with their vendors, um, and be frugal with your material shopping. Uh, like I said, just go with the market, and you know if you can cut material costs. And not, I'm not saying cut it to to be cheap. I don't even use the word cheap in my vocabulary. But cut costs because there's a lot of great products out there that's inexpensive and look great. I mean. Um, you know, from flooring to tile, it's just the, the cost of material, you know, whether it's $1.99 a square foot to $6.99 a square foot from the two different products, just, just be frugal and wise about it, is what I would say. Love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, that was uh, one of the questions was, is how do you advise your flippers to not overspend on your budget? So I think you like did a great job of answering that question. Um, and also, you know, should investors care about market trends? Like, does that matter? Um, what they like might not be what someone else like, like, so how do you handle someone that's investing, but maybe is wanting to do what they like? Do you run into that? And do you have any advice for that? Yes. Yes. Um, yep. bottom line is you're not, you know, you're supposed to find out who wants to buy an area. Just like I said a while ago, you, you know, who's buying and who's selling an area. The concept is like, if you're going to go fishing, you don't, you, although you like breads, pasta, skate, whatever, you're not going to put that in a fish, right? You're going to put warm because that's how, that's how you're going to catch it, right? <laughs> same thing, same concept. You have, you have to know who's buying. So if you know who's buying, even though you don't like those designs for yourself, but you just got to make sure you're going to cater for people who wants to buy. So that way you can flip it faster, right? So the concept is you got to think who's buying on the area to find out what kind of designs you're going to be putting in on the property. Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, someone, uh, Kathy actually had a, a question for us is what is the best way to coordinate buying materials with contractors? Uh, do you guys have any question, uh, answer on that? Um, Al, do you want to jump in on that one? Yeah. I mean, so you're going to run into different contractors. Uh, if, if there's, let's say, I'm just gonna, if there's a project, right. Um, contractor can give you a labor only bid and you can be responsible for um, buying your own materials and you can talk to your contractor if, if that's the relationship you're going to build um, you know like like us for example we we do it both ways we do a fixed rate where we include materials and also we just do a labor so that uh, we let the investor become uh, what, am, what am I like just have their design mind and in, 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 in frame to to learn how to buy what's training materials. So to answer your question, Lisa, um, you know, we allow our customers to 
to deal directly with uh, with our vendors and, and um so they can like i said once they built that relationship they can get discounts and um and also hey take advantage of memorial day labor day sales and if you want to stock up for your second project because there's a crazy sale well hey i mean take your personal debit card and buy some material and, and store it you know because obviously <laughs> materials are always going to go up uh you know especially like trim uh base and case hey, it's 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 okay to, to to stock it in your garage for a future project um what else just really just being a, a great shopper with materials don't don't jump on the first thing oh that was good and go ahead and go to another vendor and, and compare the prices. And also uh, with contractors, I mean, if if always always get two or three bids, um, and just because it's all if you can save five hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars here, a thousand here, that's all going to add up to your profit at the end of the day. Love it, love it. Okay. okay. Um, do you guys have any deal breakers that you're like? you know, investor you're working with is like, I want to do this. And you're like, I'm out. We're, you know, we're, we won't do that. Some of the things that uh, we had before is a deal breaker as far as us hiring as a contractor, right? We have um, a guy before that he, we took a look at his property and then we gave him a bid and we gave him a pretty decent, you know, we got a, a company has to make markup, right? So he's saying that, okay, can you do this? Can you do this? That to the point that we're we're not making anything at all. He said for the plumbing work, oh, I have some, I know somebody that can do this for us for 2,500. I was like, there's no way somebody's gonna do that at 2,500. So sometimes when you come in, he already got the list. Oh, I know, I know how much is this. I know how much he know more than you already before you even make a bid. I was like, let's, let's do the bid first. Let's calculate the numbers and see what we can do. And then I'm not going to pay more than this. I'm not, that's, those are kind of like red flags. That's like, okay, you probably don't have to waste time because it looks like he already knows the price and those price is not going to work for us. You know, we, we price fairly, but we have overhead expenses that we have to pay. That's why we have a certain markup to hit our parameters that to make sure that our company is going to make money. But we also need to make sure that they're going to make money. But if they want to lowball the price, of course, it's not going to work for us. That's bottom line. Yep. Yeah, and, uh, yeah um, you know, Lisa, you mentioned, you talked about permits. Um, at the end of the day, if you get red flag, if, if there's a customer that wants to do this big old addition or a big project without permits, um, I, I, I would automatically just kind of have concern and there's a red flag there because at the end of the day, if this customer is banking on, uh, it's, it's getting financed from Rain City and they run into a red flag and all of a sudden they can't proceed to the next phase, well, that affects uh, us getting paid because, you know, they're depending on getting more money. And, and if they can't because they're not following the, the general rule of, of remodels or additions or construction, or whatever the scope of work for your investment property is, uh, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna hinder us from getting paid for the work that uh, that we did that we didn't get paid for it up to that point. And, and it also just it just doesn't feel good when um, you know you're trying to cut corners. So it, you know, there's there's a difference between cutting costs and cutting corners. So once we start diving into the cutting corners part, we're gonna walk away. And then just like Peter said, a lot of times um, when we give a bid they'll start, hey, can we take this out? Can we, I have somebody else that can do this. I have some, well, then now we have to depend on uh, your plumber or your electrician and we don't, don't even know who he is. We have our own subcontractors that we work with and we have a lot of trust and we know the work they can do. So um, if they're doing a shoddy plumbing work, how can we do, you know, go install cabinets and, 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 and just proceed with the stuff after rough and plumbing? It just affects, it's a domino effect. So right. once we start, one red flag, two red flags, we're pretty much, it's a deal. Uh, yeah, we're killing a deal. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, we have, um, because I'm sure people want to see like the work that you guys have done. Um, before we go on to our case studies, one question that I would love each of you, so we can start with Peter, is 
what is one thing a new investor, if you can give them one piece of advice, either working with a contractor or just one piece of advice in general, what would you say? You Go ahead, Al. Start. You can get it. Start now. Yeah. <laughs> get three to five bids uh, from different contractors. And when they come in to that property or you meet up with them, uh, build that relationship right then and there because it'll, it'll tell you, okay, can I continue this relationship or not? Uh, a lot of times you can tell if, if the contractor is about all about money, money, money. Um, but yeah, get three to five bids off top for your first property. Awesome. Peter, do you want to piggyback on that one? Yes. Uh, the first thing, if they want to do a flip, they have to be accurate first thing with the ARV. You have to make sure that they have a good comparable market analysis. And then let's say a property is 1,800 square feet with a two-bedroom. You can basically, what can you do to improve this property so you can maximize well, how much you can sell? You can turn it into four-bedroom, two-bath. You can do this. So if you analyze that, you can increase the ARV. The moment you know exactly what the ARV is, you got to find a good contractor, like Al said, two or three or four, four or five bids to find out exactly what would be the exact rehab estimate. That way, if you have those two important numbers, therefore you can calculate if this is going to be within your range, 70% cash in cash, and what will be the time frame, and what kind of rehab you're going to do this. You got to do some permitting or not. Avoid those permitting sometimes. Uh, because you know it's going to prolong your process so if you got those two important numbers if the numbers work out at 70 percent and 15 percent project roi then you can proceed now you got to find a good funding company which is Frank city cap right awesome. yeah good answer <laughs> yes that's a great answer that's a great one um okay well let's do the case study let's show people what you guys got because it's very impressive so let's uh we're gonna switch the deck Go ahead, you, uh, Peter, if you want to start, let's talk about the deal. Um, as you're talking, we're going to flip through the before and after so you guys can see it. Um, so go ahead, let's chat about it. All right. Um, outside, it should have been outside, but I did not paint it. We just left it as it is when we purchased it. But I could have made more if I probably painted outside, but it still looks good. You know, we purchased it at 280. The renovation was 70,000. And then on one day on the market, sold so a lot of people made an offer fifty thousand dollars higher than asking price this is a home run deal yeah it's awesome it. um greta can you yeah there you go for the after this. pictures uh this is this was the kitchen and then we got rid of that wall this is wow. uh, al's idea actually when oh we got gosh. rid of the wall make it an open concept design and then we put that hood right there with a kitchen with a nice uh it, it looks awesome after everything is done. It looks spacious. We did not change the square footage, but it looks more spacious because of getting rid of that wall. That is yeah. the idea. And, and I just want to chime in. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. I just want to chime in and say, look how good the finishes look. And these are all contracted grade materials, right? Um, so that's why I don't, I don't like to use the word cheap or cheaper because like I said earlier, there's a wide range of materials that you can select from nowadays. Um, so yeah. That's and that, so good. If, if you go back there real quick, um, you see that uh, counter um, backsplash right there? Yeah. Uh, the reason why I designed it that way because the one I saw close by has the same design. Oh, wow. It sold out this much pretty quick. So I copied that design from them. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> the market. Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> And over here. Wow, living room. Yes. Yes, that looks good. I remember this. And then yes. who stages for you? What's the name of the staging company? I forgot. I think Darcy Ewan or something like that. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot the name, but Darcy is we, his first name. We can leave some info uh, as far as our stager, if anybody yes. wants to know. And um, how long did it take you to complete this project? Month and a half. Yeah, this one's oh pretty gosh. fast. That's pretty fast. See that one right there? That was one one bedroom and uh, one uh, uh, big uh, bathroom right there. And yep. there's only one right there. We close we close off the door and then turn it into part of the masters. And we put a him and hers right there. And then that, that door, you see, that wasn't there before. 
we created that, so it's going to be part of the master's bathroom. Yeah, so this was this bathroom was actually the main bathroom of the house. Mm -hmm. Um, there's there's another bathroom down the hall. So what we did was, hey, you know what? This house does not have a true master bedroom. There's there's three bedrooms, and one of them doesn't have a bathroom. And this one just happened to be right next door to one of the bedrooms. And like Peter said earlier, we closed off the wall. Uh, I think if you go back one picture or the picture here. Oh, that one, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so you're looking at the old entrance to this bathroom, and if you look by the window, um, and the big mirror all the way to the right, that's where the entrance is from the master bath, uh, bedroom as it just sits now. So like I said, we turned the main bathroom into a master um, and really offered that to, to buyers. Like, who doesn't want to buy a, a house without a master, true master? Right. So. That's a big one. Freddie, can you, yeah. So these are the bedrooms. That's the bedroom before. Yeah. And then just change it with the white color and everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and the bedroom, really the good. bedrooms are it's, you know, you're you're you get to cut a lot of cost in bedrooms. It's, yes. You know, carpet, paint, trim. Um, yeah. you know, you might have to put uh, new windows, but yeah, we didn't do a lot of work in this in this bedroom, Peter, right? We just yeah, slapped, we didn't have to do all, all, all aesthetics, all aesthetics. And yep. then uh, it saved us some money uh, on a carpet because instead of putting LBP on a room, you know, there's three bedrooms, we decided to just do a floor. Back then when we got this one, that carpet right there was like 99 cents price per square foot materials and labor. You're not going to get that oh. right now. No, but you that won't. was a big difference. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Awesome. Look at the next and this one. is the office I was talking about. Um, there's a big living room there, a dining area. So we cut that in half. And then we utilize this by putting an office and they can use this as an office or maybe they can do it as a bad, uh, bedroom if they chose to. Yep. Mm. And, good. and looks like a real, but that's uh, that's a uh, electric um, fireplace. And then we just put a stone there and we changed that wall into a ship lap. And it turned out to be, and it's not too expensive. That's really yeah, that cute. Looks so yeah. good. <laughs> that, that looks so good. good. I, I would definitely advise uh, accent walls, whether you do a different paint color or, uh, like in that case, ship lap. Yes. Oh, cool. That one looks so good. And the yellow pop, that looks good. Yeah. And that's that's all metal roof, too, when we bought it. It's all metal. Oh, was roof. it? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Is that cheaper? Uh, no, we, we didn't, we didn't replace expensive. the roof. It, it was already oh. metal. Uh, for it's existing already metal. And, so that worked out into our favor, and uh, which is nice, good, good pressure wash. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. It's a, it was, yeah, they got it replaced not too long ago, actually, so. That's awesome. That's so cool. All right. All right, oh, the next one. Yep. Yep. This one, it took longer than we expected because of the permitting. We're gonna do some permitting on the framing because we need to add some bedrooms on the bottom and, and all that. Uh, that's why right now we're trying to avoid bi um, big renovations, especially if permitting has to be included, you know. So yep. we're trying to avoid that, but sometimes help it. We, we want the deal, but <laughs> we got we to gotta focus on getting faster deals right now, but, you know. Well, yeah. In this case, um, you know, for bigger flips like this, where the scope is definitely more detailed, you know, it, it made sense because we wanted to increase, take the basement, a, a, a big chunk of that basement was unfinished. Mm -hmm. And obviously to, to return the bang of your buck, we were like, hey, you know what, let's make, uh, we're going to go ahead and add to the, the square footage of this house. Uh, so that's why we had to go through the permitting process. This is two great examples. Uh, the Lakewood project, obviously, month and a half, it was mostly all aesthetics. Um, and we, we didn't have to pull any permits. So this one here, like Peter said, it took a lot longer than expected, but uh, the scope was pretty much, we gutted the whole house. Yeah. Uh, all new electrical, all new plumbing, all new mechanical, everything yeah. is pretty much new in this house. And look, look, look can you go back there? Um, look, look at that big living room right there. Where, yeah. where we thought about how we're gonna utilize this. But we what we did is we, we put a wall there so we can use that as a bathroom a nice bathroom 
and oh, that's what happened right there. So we yeah, can you utilize see the wall there now. Yes, that's the wall right there, and turn it into a living room. And the good thing about this property is it's in front of the water. You can see the beach. You can see the Tacoma Naris Bridge on it. So I think there we the location is so awesome. Yeah, that's what it looked before. <laughs> yep. Wow, guys. Yeah, look at it wow. right there. Look at that. Yeah. Yep. It's awesome. And this kitchen right here, after yep. the transformation, it's same thing, same design, right? I like that black backsplash. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so Looks good. Different. Yeah. Looks really, really good. Reminds me of my, my grandma's there kitchen. There we go. Nice white uh, cabinets, nice uh, quartz countertop. Yeah. Then the hood, mm -hmm. and oh, that's why the, the right now, the, the owner, future owner, loves part of the kitchen because while well, she's cooking doing the dishwasher she can actually see the, the water you know so. right that's awesome oh and that pretty bathroom, bathroom. <laughs> yeah this um, look, look at how big that and that's all heated flooring too heated oh tile. nice that's a nice Huge. touch it's a very yeah, nice touch one advice if try to keep all your locations of rooms uh, where it's at. Don't try to move your, your kitchen from one corner of the house to the other because mm. on the surface it might seem easy, but then you got to reroute all your electrical, plumbing. Uh, if it makes sense, go for it, but if don't, don't, we almost did that here. Uh, Cost more money. money. <laughs> Cost more money to do that, yeah, you know. Exactly. Absolutely. So great. Oh, that looks so good. And that one right there, see that um, uh, French door? Yeah. That was a wall before we cut it, and then we we create it, we open it, and then this uh, patio there, on that side, yeah, for the master. There was a there was a window there, and we just turned it into French doors and put a deck. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely probably the best master suite that we've done so far. Master this, suite. This master suite we has an office a, uh, office, <laughs> office attached to the master suite. Mm. Yes. That's awesome. Bring on the 80s. Yeah, I know. I was like, yeah. I recognize that bathroom. Yeah. The, the owner that uh, used to live here before, when the, when she saw it, one of the owners, the daughter, she was on tears when she saw this because she remembered she has a lot of memories on this. You know, yeah. she, she was impressed with like how the finishes down after we finished the project, you know. That's awesome. That's really cool. Oh, another bedroom. I see that you didn't put carpet in this one. Is there uh, reasons or advice that you can give? Like some carpets, I'm not, or are you thinking that might be a den? It's it's a bigger bigger price point, so we decided to just do an LVP on on, on everything. Oh, bigger, great advice. Yes, so that's the reason why that's we have. The, the profit margin is pretty big enough for us to afford it anyway. And yeah. then it's front of the water. And then if we could have sold this uh, when when the market is hotter, we could have sold this easily a million, easily. Yeah. When, but okay. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with what's going on right now. Yes, absolutely. And the next one. Oh, this, this looks, uh, the transformation, just because I've seen it, that looks nice. You guys did a yes. great job there. Wow. That's really good. We also um, put a second beer on a roof there. That's awesome. Yeah, we did. That's a new roof up there. Yep. Yeah. That looks so good. Awesome. Thank you for sharing those with us. Um, I know it's getting close to the end of time, so we want to open this up for Q and A. Well, that's so cool. Okay, so everyone get an opportunity. Put a screenshot the their contact or their contact. Um, we'll just give it a couple more seconds because then what we'll do is we will put our um, information on as well. And you guys, I can't thank you enough for taking an hour, hour and a half of your busy time. I know you guys are very, very busy and to um, come on, ask us all these questions and have us ask you all these questions. Um, I really appreciate it. So thank you so much from the bottom yeah, of uh, Chris and I's heart. So Absolutely. Well, thank you guys. Is there anything that you would like to add before we leave? 
And no, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, yeah. It's always great networking. And if anybody, we'll be sure to answer everybody's questions uh, to follow up. Yes, Absolutely. I appreciate for uh, having us here. And then uh, for, all, for all the people that are asking questions, we're willing to answer more if you guys email us. And if you need help with any brick construction projects, you feel free to call us and visit our oh, website. We will. Oh, we will. Thank we you. definitely will. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate right, it. Have a good night, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good Bye. Day. Have Thank a good you dinner. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.